How's it going? Another Thursday is upon us. It is Nate Mumford, quarantined still here in Danbury, Connecticut. Another installment of our RCS questions and answers during a time of remote workflows. And I made the joke yesterday. Well, unfortunately, I thought we were hopefully starting the second wave, but unfortunately, it's still technically the first wave, which means we're still talking about remote workflows. I hope you and your family and friends are safe. And again, we're doing this every Thursday during uh, COVID-19 to help answer your questions and any kind of remote workflows or all of that good stuff. So if you have any questions, comments, as you know, as always, live at rcsworks.com. You can comment below. You can also uh, direct message us if you want to keep more things a little more discreet or if you have a specific question you want answered that you want to take offline. Uh, today, I am joined by the infamous... Scott Farr, RCS uh, Canadian Sales Manager. Scott, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for the invitation, Nate. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for the time. So uh, I thought we'd bring in Scott today because Scott has a great presentation he's done in regards to some of the, well, you can see here, advanced radio program delivery architecture. And what that really means is we're talking about, and you've been hearing me say this before on past videos. That's right. All the videos we have are archived on our Facebook page or our blog section, rcsworks.com. Uh, essentially, that hybrid model we're talking about, we're talking about with a lot of our RCS products, because we have this integration between so many of our products, we can start developing certain workflows. And what Scott's done is really talk about, from the company perspective, how you can connect all of your sites, your stations, and really maximize your employee efficiency so that you can have a truly hybrid model. So I'll let Scott kick it off right now. Um, so Scott, give a little background. Uh, maybe you wanna say hi and then go from there. I uh, say hi to everyone. And uh, it, you know, it's great to, great to join you and talk about one of my, my favorite topics, which is the, the architecture, um, which is really underneath the hood uh, of Zeta and the ability to be able to communicate um, um, and, and develop new advanced workflows. I think that's some of the compelling things that I saw in Zeta uh, and, and I love to talk about it because structurally, sometimes it gets into the weeds as you would say, Nate, um, mm -hmm. but, none, but nonetheless, you know, it is one of the core capabilities of Zeta and uh, I, I don't think we talk about it enough. I certainly talk about it too much, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is a great opportunity to, to look at it from a, I'm gonna call it from an architectural perspective from, um, shall we say, a, um, um, an organizational um, perspective and how is that it could be deployed to solve all kinds of very unique problems. So um, without further ado, um, I thought having a look at some of the Zeta core technology uh, and how this would apply uh, to some of the hybrid um, architectures that we we're talking about. And of course, at the very core of, of Zeta is, is this layered and modular design, you know, that isolates the core functionality. You know, playout is not tied to the on-air user interface. Live data is everywhere. Uh, and that's because we communicate to a SQL server. So everything we do within Zeta you know, communicates to and from the SQL server. So we know what's going on in real time uh, from any uh, from any location. Uh, most specifically in the local area, uh, we're able to communicate live and real-time data and also allows for what we call a very flexible system in studio design because the functionality of, of, of Zeta you know, can, be <clears throat> can be located in different parts of your, of your facility. Uh, your play -out can be in a different location than your studios. Your production can be within your studio. It could be, again, remotely with Zeta to go. And also with the modular user interface, we're able to lay out Zeta uh, based on the workflow tasks. So if you're doing voice tracking, if you're working in traffic, if you're doing commercial production, uh, you can lay out the screens in different ways to highlight the various different modules that would be applicable to, to your workflow functions. Also with the enterprise shared database, uh, another core functionality. This, this basically is all about sharing your media, your metadata, your schedules, your voice tracks. You know, any station location can be assigned viewing of any and all assets that are connected through site replication. So the site replication is really all about an automated data replication between stations and locations. And also it's the tool that we use to communicate to the Zeta cloud. So that we can communicate any facility uh, to the cloud so that all of the core data 
the media, the metadata, the schedules and voice tracks, and all can be, uh, can be shared to and from the cloud. Also a very flexible architecture in, term of that, in terms of that communications um, is where we basically can have what we call, I call an advanced hub and spoke. And we, you can see that up here where in fact, we can have multiple facilities talking to each other. We can have one facility talking to many or we can have many to one type of communication. We can also do this with on-demand and of course with the automated data sync, which is site replication. I think that's where some of the magic lay. One of the other key pieces, of course, is our advanced audio engine. It's based on Wasapi, which is the Windows audio uh, system API. And basically we can play, record, manage, and mix any audio, MPEG, layer one, two, three, AAC, broadcast wave. And it supports multiple simultaneous bit rates, bit depths, and sample rates. So with bit rates, I can have anything from you know, 64 kilobits to 384 or um, whatever that might be, bit depths in terms of like common is 16 and 24 bit. And of course, sample rates. I mean, there's a list of sample rates that are out there. And we also do a non-destructive um, time expand and compress on the play of as well. So why this is all important <clears throat> is how that audio is shared uh, across the network. So you can have a piece of audio, which is, shall we say, it's normalized um, for your individual station that you're in now. Uh, but again, because that's a non-destructive normalization that when we ensure that same piece of audio, um, this, this um, audio is, is normalized to that specific station standard. So what that means is I can record anything anywhere to any specific standard, but be able to share that across the enterprise uh, and still have that audio intact. So we're not having to reproduce it for different normalization strategies that you may have at various different stations. Once that piece of audio is shared, all the information about its normalization um, is, is in the database. And then each station would have a very different normalization tactic. So I don't know if you're having a plus four as your, as your peak audio output and in another place using a plus 12 or a plus 20, whatever that might be, uh, that audio would be normalized uh, to that individual station standard. Yeah, so again, I, yeah, I always like to put too, uh, Scott, I always say you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen. So for example, normalization as producers, we all have kind of our sweet spot. So you might have normalization at negative three. For me, it might be zero. And then all of a sudden with Zeta's non-destructive normalization, you get that consistency. And again, you get that consistency across markets, across stations, across users. That's right. So a piece of audio you produce anywhere under any specific um, uh, production standards, again, is usable anywhere else because those production standards are, are basically database items. So that audio is useful anywhere you put it. That's important. Uh, that's important because you want to share that. The other one of the key um, uh, pieces of the puzzle when we look at Zeta's core capabilities is the Zeta split. And, and basically, this is satellite affiliate oper operations without the problems. And I, you know, I, I'm going to give away my age a little bit, but that used to be one of the real problems <laughs> that we had in automation. You know, was was how do we sync up with the uh, with the satellite operator? How do we uh, how do we get that program source? I mean, there was all kinds of methods of queuing. I mean, we got audible, subaudible tone. We got closures, we got all kinds of things. And assuming all those were in the correct place at the correct time, uh, and our interpretation of them was correct, uh, we had a good show. If any one of those things went wrong, we had a really bad show, <laughs> and things went very bad, very quick. Um, also, what we can do with it, and, and so in operating this, is that basically we have a master station with multiple split stations. So uh, we're, we're both the, uh, the satellite um, provider and we're also the affiliate, but the nature of the communication between the, uh, the operator and the affiliate is very tight. So we're doing that to ourselves, if you will, and all of our communication is real time via IP. Mm -hmm. And so the schedule based breakaways do the local content substitution. So we can have a master and we can just simply set up on our clocks that we have um, commercial spot breaks, we have IDs, liners and imaging. And so that in fact, when the master is playing an ID or an imaging item, um, the local um, split breakaway uh, would play the local elements. Um, we also have what we call definable um, uh, audio asset split behaviors. So this basically can allow us to do something in real time. So in the old days, of course, if they decided to do something unique and different that didn't match the clock. We were just simply messed up. You couldn't mm -hmm. follow it. With Zeta, you can. We can basically do that with what we call asset tagging. So in other words, if the, the master is playing an ID, 
we'll basically have all of our potential uh, affiliate I tags with ID, and we'll be able to, in real time, be able to say, ah, that's an ID, let's play an ID. So let's mute the master, play that local ID and return to the master. And it's always a perfectly timed rejoin. You know, all segments are automatically time adjusted to the length of the break. So if the master would break away for 15 seconds, we break away for 15 seconds and we play local audio for 15 seconds. Even if it's not programmed, we also have a fill category that we can use and say, oh my goodness, we have to fill to, to, uh, to an unscheduled 15 seconds. And then we'll just simply go to the list of things uh, based on the asset tag or just based on a general fill category and go, oh my goodness, we have to fill 15 seconds here. So we can do this from the schedule or on the fly. Um, the hybrid operation, it's basically um, a schedule-based split or a local program playout. And split stations can have unique day parts and schedules as well. So what that would mean is that we're, we're following the satellite program, if you will, for most of the day part, but we're breaking away um, for other day parts. And, and here in Canada, what we have is individual stations that may be following uh, the master. Um, CRTC dictates that we have to have a certain amount of locally generated programming. Um, so we would have to break away under this, this satellite affiliate model and, and do some local programming. And we can program that right within our Zeta, uh, uh, right within, you know, if we're using G selector to drive the clock, we can say, all right, in the middle of the day, we're no longer following that, affiliate, that master station. We're now actually filling in with a couple of hours of local programming, which could be music generated from G selector. It could be a long form programming like newscasts or interviews or anything that you choose. This is great for regional broadcasts, and we'll talk about regionalization and, and, uh, and, and localization in a little bit, um, but you can do HD channels, translators, internet streams, and more. So if you have to rebrand your broadcast for any purpose, um, that we can automatically do that uh, with, a split, with a split feed. So yeah, and to, a, go ahead, Scott, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say to kind of uh, give you some examples here, um, you know, this can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. As Scott was saying, you know, I always kind of give the example of um, internet streams is a great way to interpret Zeta splits at this very simplistic level. You know, we have that internet streams where maybe you can't air certain commercials on your stream, so you have to split away, but you want to maintain that primary content. So the Zeta split would be for your internet stream to air a second commercial traffic log for just the stream or for example if you have a sporting event that can't air due to broadcast rights on your stream you can have a split the terrestrial station the terrestrial sequencer would play essentially the the game and yours that a split would of course split away and play another form of content and as scott was saying you know this is great for regional broadcast hg channels and again having that primary content sort but breaking away uh, throughout the day, day part, again, as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Absolutely. And I, this is one of the inherent capabilities inside the Zeta, which, you know, we don't often talk about, but is really a very powerful tool. Um, basically here with the Zeta splits, when I talked about the asset tags and split behaviors that can be defined on every audio asset, and here very quickly, we can see that we have a tag element in here. Um, this tag element would simply say, hey, I'm an ID, I am a promo, I am something that can be defined. So in case the master should break away in some unscheduled um, uh, program, uh, that in fact, we could then automatically re um, uh, be able to react to that. And what do we do with that is the split behavior that we, we mute the master audio, we play the, lo the local asset, and then we return to the master audio. So I thought I would show this screen because that does highlight that, in fact, the tagging is a really important piece of the puzzle here. If you really want to be dynamic or if you have an environment which is highly dynamic and you need to be able to respond to those situations on demand. Of course, Zeta to go. Um, you know, what can I say? I mean, we talk a lot about Zeta to go, but it's an extremely powerful tool. And it is one of the fundamental, um, um, I, I guess, one of the fundamental pieces of, of, of a hybrid solution. So. The Zeta to go basically allows us to be able to voice track from anywhere, do remote operations from anywhere, uh, be able to do content management. I mean, we can, you know, we can now upload audio and manage the, manage the database and of course, cluster monitoring. And I'm going to go to a screen here, which shows this is very cool is that what we can do is with, with, with um, the system monitor function of Zeta to go, we can actually look at what's going on in each individual cluster. If we're actually managing multiple clusters and we'll run up multiple uh, browser screens, if you will, with, with the status of each of the clusters input. So we can see what's going on. We can see what's on the air. 
if everything is operating correctly, if there's any problems. And again, the other thing I like to talk about we said I'd go is a voice track, because again, that's a powerful tool. We can voice track from anywhere. We can do out of market voices coming into Marcus to give you know that fresh feeling. Um, and again, people can come in from anywhere. You could be using um, third party talent, uh, come, having them come in and, uh, and voice track your, your overnights or whatever it may be. And again, that's one of the core functions of, of the Zeta to go. And one of the really compelling uses of Zeta to go that I thought I would share with this, and I know it's a bit of a departure, Nate, I apologize, but no, it's so cool here. If you look at the, the Wheatstone screen builder and how you can use, you know, basically incorporate um, Zeta to go right within something like the Wheatstone screen builder is that you can actually have your console and your playout um, literally completely uh, within one uh, browser screen. I, I, that's a very compelling picture. And I, I love to show that one every time because how you can utilize Zeta to go and how you can actually integrate it with other applications is very compelling. Absolutely. And by the way, before I forget too, Scott, we have, as you're saying, that hybrid model, we have a lot of users who interpret Zeta to go in many different ways. Of course, as you were saying, we have the remote capabilities, so we can go and add audio from our house if we're in quarantine. Um, but also, don't forget, there's some day-to-day -day operational purposes for Zeta to go. We have a lot of users, uh, again, the example there is, let's say they have um, five stations in a cluster. That means they have five program directors, some afternoon talents, maybe some morning shows, and there may be only three production studios due to real estate. So obviously, if I'm a PD and I want to monitor my station, I might not be able to do that in a production studio or the on-air studio. So we do have some clients that like to, at the desk of the PD, have Zeta to go open with their FM tuner so they can hear it, they can view it, and they can monitor their station while not utilizing some of those production studios. No, absolutely. It's, it, you know, Zeta to go and, and how you would choose to use it. I mean, you know, just let your imagination go wild. I mean, you can literally do anything from anywhere. And, and certainly, you know, in, in this um, shutdown and lockdown scenario that we're in, I mean, Zeta to go has proven to be an extremely valuable tool. The things you can do with it now from your home and run your radio station and, and people wouldn't know that you're not there except for you would know because you're not physically in the studio you're used to. So, <laughs> so it does provide some internal changes and challenges. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, what we're trying to deliver as a product in radio, I mean, people don't see um, the fundamental changes that have occurred. They don't hear them. Um, and uh, they're operating as per normal, although it's from the guy's basement or his rec room, you just don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, we see a lot of that. We have a couple of stations in uh, Quebec City that are really just, just loving this platform. And, and again, it's been uninterrupted operation for them. Uh, same jocks, same shows, same things going on. Uh, but again, they're doing it from their living rooms, you know, could be miles and miles apart, but the team is still the team and they're still broadcasting like a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right on. So we're moving on to uh, the advanced uh, cluster architecture. And this is where we start talking about uh, regionalization and localization. What's the strategy? So just a quick look at what a traditional, a typical cluster deployment would look like. And that's where, in fact, we have, you know, all of the pieces of the puzzle, our production, our traffic, our programming with G-Selector and traffic with Acquira. Um, we have on-air studios, we have production studios, and then we have playout. So the compelling thing with this, uh, with the Zeta configuration in this scenario is that we can have basically one workstation that would play out multiple stations. Now, don't panic. <laughs> you can also have what we call a hot spare as well. So in case that one workstation should go down, you're not going to lose four stations. You're just going to flip, flip over to the, uh, to the hot spare. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, AOIP gives us some very powerful flexibility in terms of audio routing to make sure that, that your standard architectures work. So the other thing I'd like to just say here is that with our on-air studios is that these on-air studios don't necessarily have to be assigned to individual stations. Any one of these studios could be any one of the on-air stations that are out there at any time can switch. You can have multiple studios actually participating in the same audio stream. So again, extreme flexibility in terms of how you want to put this together. And that would be our, what we call our typical cluster deployment. And just to fill in the blanks there too, Scott, so that would be, of course, Zeta Enterprise piece of software. You have the on-air sequencer for any station you want. And then that's what he, Scott's referring to is you're not locked to having Studio One is Station One. It's purely, really, Studio One could have access to X number of, uh, of stations. It's just really the output of the board we're talking about. 
Absolutely. And of course, Zedda2Go go here, I mean, Zedda can go can do any one of the functions that you see here. And of course, we have acquirer to go and G selector to go. Um, so any one of the functions that, that may be assigned, a, you know, to an individual studio or, or within the facility anywhere, again, that can be uh, that can be accommodated through our very, very compelling to go platform. Uh, anything can be done remotely. So that brings us to something a little bit more complicated here. So again, what we can talk with regional program delivery with localization is that basically we have a split playout. So as you can see here, the split playout provides the substitutions based on you know, the uh, programming that we have. So if we're doing a spot break, um, the local split station here would actually substitute the local content uh, for the master content. So we'd have IDs, spot breaks, promos, whatever they might be. Um, they would be individually substituted for each of the split stations. And again, very powerful, precise timing rejoin. So even though we may have, let's say a master break of, of 60, 60 seconds, a full one minute break, um, but we only have enough content uh, in that commercial breakaway uh, from the local station, maybe it's only 30 seconds worth of content. Again, we would automatically fill uh, based on our fill categories or our tag as asset tags uh, that we'd be able to fill at that island so that we'd be able to rejoin uh, precisely when the local, when the master um, is going to be breaking away from its localized uh, commercial breaks as well. And of course, multiple live master stations. Um, that, this is a very compelling um, consideration that while we set up a split station to follow a master, and that's really the, the fundamental behind it. So we're following station, split one will be following master station one. But somewhere during that day, uh, we can actually change what master we're following. And, and that's compelling because let's just say that we have master one, two, three, and four, and master one, two, three, and four represent, you know, uh, four different audio formats. So, we, you know, we've got country, we've got top 40, we've got AC, we've got classic rock. <clears throat> so any one of the affiliate stations or the split stations can actually say, well, during the day, I'm going to be doing top 40. Uh, during the afternoons, I'm going to be doing country um, or AC. Um, and overnights, I'm going to be doing rock. And so basically all I do within my schedule, I change which master I'm following. And that's so very compelling because it allows you access to that level uh, of, of programming change that you may want to occur. And again, all your breakaways and everything else, again, are that operate in the same way that regardless of which master we're following, when we do a, a commercial breakaway, when we do an ID, when we do a promo or, or some other type of event, which is to be split away from the master, we can do that. And of course, with Zeta to go, um, we add another compelling um, piece of the puzzle is that again we can control you know the master station remotely from the local station whatever we would choose to do we can do it um, we can also then take over the individual stations just say we're doing a split takeaway we're going to do a live show and i'll get into that in a little bit more as we start to look at this at this cluster um, architecture a little bit more deeply so again the idea behind this is that we can set up um, the localization based on the based on the station follow so just on the, on the um, local station side of things, what would this look like? I mean, the local station options, we can have basically a direct feed to the transmitter. We can do a studio feed as we see here, or we can do a studio feed with local playout capabilities. And that's, again, a very compelling amount of, of um, uh, I guess, flexibility in terms of how you would wanna bolt this together. And I know some people, when in fact are just looking for economies of scale, and that's where we can take you know, an ISTL decoder in this case, we're picking up the stream from the master, which could be you know, anywhere in, in the world for that matter, and then streaming it, taking that, decoding it and streaming it directly to, to the transmitter. So the, the design of the ISTL is all about you know, a client that we have here in Canada who runs six stations across Canada um, out, of, out of a small town in Ontario. And each of these individual six stations are spread all across Ontario. Um, they're in... Uh, uh, north, uh, rural, rural Ontario. They have them in <clears throat> Saskatchewan and, and northern, northern Canada as well in the Yukon. And so they basically, they just send that STL feed, if you will, via, um, via a codec encoding to the individual stations uh, across Canada. So um, one of the things I didn't really talk about a lot here is I didn't want to get into the weeds on uh, how you may want to distribute your audio over great um, larger geographic um, uh, separation, 
uh, but certainly the ISTL, and I think uh, Telos has one that they're using, and uh, they're able to encode their audio for each instation uh, individually at the master, and then send out the individual split feed output. And there's a number of ways that this can be bolted together. Uh, so again, it can be directly to your transmitter, it can be directly to local studio, and directly to local studio where we have a local playout capability as well. And Scott, we got our first question, by the way. Uh, Michael was checking in, and he was curious about, um, of course, analog or digital audio over IP. You know, both work, correct? But... Yeah, absolutely. You know, how you choose to um, uh, deliver your audio to your, I'm going to call it the ISTL encoder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be anything from, from analog, uh, yep. AOIP, uh, AES, EBU, whatever it is. And then it gets encoded, so it gets into a a format which can be then received by the decoder and decoded out. And then the decoder's capability in terms of how it delivers that physical output, you know, again, that could be analog, yeah. that can be AES EBU, it can be, uh, you know, AOIP of, uh, you know, any brand manufacturer, so long as it's supported by your decoder, or you have something in between here, mm -hmm. which simply takes the decoded output and then transcodes it into the specific audio format that you require. AKA, we're very flexible. That's the idea. Absolutely. We have no <laughs> rules in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going. We, Thank you, Michael. We integrate with all the tools that are out there. Yes, thanks, Michael. So let's talk about a Zeta cluster network. And again, we get that amoeba looking thing over here, which is really what we, um, what's really important with this is that we, we have a very flexible hub and spoke kind of situa situation. Um, so basically with a Zeta cluster network, the concepts that I'm working into here is basically we have a centralized con uh, content production and programming. So this could be your master facilities, wherever they may want to be located. And then we have regional facilities. These regional facilities can contribute to this hub and spoke, uh, or they can just simply receive it. And that's where we're receiving regional live or scheduled shows. Um, uh, there could be national uh, shows that we're receiving. And again, how we put it all together and the ISTL um, design and, and layout here gives us some really powerful live programming flexibility, but I don't wanna get into that. We're not into the ISTL business, but um, there are lots of people are and they're very good at it. And the technology is so much, um, is so refined nowadays and it gets better every day. So again, with the regionalized uh, production programming, we can have people that, you know, maybe, uh, and we even talk about the programming side of things as well as the production, is that we, maybe we have some of our experts that are in different centers. So maybe our country music person is in the Western part of, of the country. And, you know, we want that talent there. We can't bring them to, you know, our central facility, which may be, you know, New York or Toronto, uh, but we want him to stay where he is, but we want him to continue to contribute and, and also be the format master for our country programming. So we can accommodate that uh, from a regional perspective as well. And of course, if we're looking at centralized programming, we're bringing down regional clocks. Regional clocks, as to how they affect. Now, Nate, you had a really great conversation the other day about G Selector S3 programming. Mm -hmm. And if we look at, you know, S3 is driving this from the top down, we can then customize the clocks and, and the and the organization of the programming that's coming from our master, wherever that happens to be. And again, we have no uh, we have no specific um, designation to a, when it comes to a master because of everything being on 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 site replication. Uh, so site replication provides you know the the ability for us to share whatever we do from wherever we are um, with any other uh, with any other station that happens to be within our group. And again, with station localizations, I mean, with, with the splits, we have the breakaways that can be local or live scheduled shows. Again, with the S3 programming, we can even bring that down even further is to say, we may wanna have a regional approach. We may wanna have an extremely local approach. And the nice thing to know is that we can do this in a completely hybrid way. Um, and we'll talk about the architecture in a little bit more, but the, uh, I guess the, the glue that holds us all together from any configuration perspective in the Zeta cluster network is the site replication. Yeah. The ability to be able to share that content across the, uh, across the, the enterprise. Yeah. And just cause we have a couple minutes left here, Scott, just want to briefly touch base that G selector S3 Scott was talking about is our scheduled subscription service. Uh, as you were saying, kind of the format captain, so to speak, and you have all these affiliates. I might do a Facebook live in the upcoming weeks about that too. Cause we're seeing a lot more traction on the S3. So go ahead. Sorry, Scott. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so again, just looking at a cluster network, and I'll move through this fairly quickly. I mean, we can spend hours talking about this design and, and, and you know, what's genius about it and what's insane about it. But basically, we can do master programming from a national. So one of the conversations I've been having um, here in Canada is that basically we want everything, all their master programming from the national facility and the regionalization uh, by formats um, and, and regional live programming by format. So we can actually take a national program. So let's just say we wanna do our morning drives from our master facility, but we wanna do our uh, afternoon drives and we wanna do all of our other programming from the, original, from the regional cluster. So you can see here that we can do live programming, distribute it you know, either in, in, in audio form um, or live form through ISTL we can deliver that out to our regional cluster facilities, which can then determine what the localizations would be for each of the individual stations that are associated to those regional clusters. Um, so again, the localization um, for each of the individual stations, regionalization based on S3 and a few other techniques, and also the live programming capability to do in your region. So I can actually do a regional drive uh, afternoon show that's served all of my individual stations who are associated with that cluster. Or I can do a, a live program from my main cluster facility, which is delivered to all of my stations in all of my regions. So how you would choose to put this together, again, extremely flexible and very powerful. So, to cloud or not to cloud is the question. And I know there's a lot, been a lot of conversation around utilizing the cloud in radio broadcast. And you know, I, what's interesting is that the, the, um, the conversation has is, is, is certainly picked up over the last few years and, and under our current situations as well, you know, it does make, the, um, does make the cloud a little bit more compelling, more compelling every day. And so to cloud or not to cloud is a question, but perhaps according, it is, is nobler to consider a hybrid. And uh, I'm quoting Shakespeare here very badly, and I apologize. But, I'm sure, did you see my Shakespeare impression? I was trying to. <laughs> yeah, you, you need a little slightly pointier mustache. <laughs> So basically the radio broadcast cloud hybrid is where we're going. So the Zeta cloud hybrid, it really utilizes both physical Zeta architecture and the Zeta cloud, brings the best of both worlds together. You're not committed to one or the other, but both give you the ultimate uh, flexibility in terms of how you want to lay it out. So just a quick overview of the Zeta cloud content management and automation, just like we did with Zeta's to say, here's some of the key things that, that is very important about um, the Zeta cloud. And again, just a quick top level discussion and I'm not a programmer, so I'm just gonna look at the, the just core architecture here for just a moment. Virtual machine just uh, is a, an abstraction layer uh, of the hardware layer. You know, it's basically not particularly efficient nor is it scalable. Whereas containerization is an abstraction of the application layer, provides standalone, standalone executable software packages this is a highly efficient model for development and delivery. It's very portable and it's highly scalable. So just a quick picture of what that means. And you can look at this and see, well, with containerized, basically my container contains all the applications I would need. So if I wanna move my container functionality, in this case, Zeta Cloud, to wherever I would choose to need it, and that can be the cloud, that can be a local workstation, that can be a variety of different things. That container just simply allows me to grab this whole thing and drop it down on a host operating system somewhere else. Whereas if you look at the virtual machine, basically what we have is we have the infrastructure, we have a hypervisor, which could be, you know, whatever your, your cloud hypervisor would be, it could be um, AWS, Azure, whatever it might be. And then we have to put another guest operating system on, then the application on top of that, which is your virtual machine. None of these are shareable, by the way. So these virtual machines, depending on your application, design, most application designs that are designed for your desktop aren't, aren't particularly shareable via the cloud. Uh, whereas the containerization of Zeta Cloud is highly shareable. So what that means is once we deploy that, you know, we want one or two, three people um, uh, working that application, it's inherently part of the design. So I'm gonna leave that alone. That's, uh, that's areas for, um, for Chip and his team. Um, but let's have a look at the play out architecture uh, with, with Zeta Cloud. Basically what we can do is Zeta Cloud becomes a stream host. Um, in this case, it's an ice cast host. We can stream to a hosting service like Revma, which I think is a really great idea. And it's probably another conversation point about why streaming to Revma would be very, 
uh, probably the best deployment uh, of, of, of Zeta Cloud, just simply because we can have uh, Revma act as the switchboard, the big audio router, so we can switch sources to outputs um, and, and give some tremendous capability. Also, uh, Zeta Cloud will give you multiple streams per playout. So if we had various different bit rates, perhaps maybe that we want to be able to send out, we got 64 kilobit AAC that we want to send out to our web, and we've got you know 256 kilobit uh, AAC that we want to send to actual our our um, you know our STL, if you will. We support AAC MP3 up to 384 kilobits. I think we can do better than that, but that was one of the um, conversations I was having. And of course, we can do embedded playout. And this is web-based remote playout uh, of an embedded playout device. And that's very compelling. And uh, I'm gonna talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, and, and we did this at the NAB a couple of years ago and it's a very compelling um, and very interesting way of, of deploying um, Zeta Cloud. So again, distributed database architecture provides us enterprise shared data, availability and scalability. We can grow horizontally uh, through a shared cloud-based data structure. All right, so let's look at the cloud hybrid architecture very quickly. Enterprise database architecture, uh, we have the audios and schedules stored centrally, available to physical and cloud services, automated distribution via uh, site replication, and of course it gives us the ability to deliver programs in a very agile and flexible way. Um, Zeta physical applications and services provide a piece of that puzzle as we look at the amoeba over here so that we can have local, local um, assets, um, local uh, play out, we can have local production facilities and have that contribute to the overall architecture. And of course, the Zeta cloud um, applications and services, and these were fundamentally we look at web-based attended and unattended applications as we can do with the physical play out, we can do the same thing with the Zeta cloud. Disaster recovery, if in fact we're looking at a physical application, uh, physical deployment of our, of our programming, uh, if we should have some kind of you know, disaster occur with that, we can, the Zeta cloud disaster recovery is all about that. It's how we can pick up that programming, we can pick up that station and, and begin delivering it from the cloud. Uh, with the cloud, of course, it's on demand, agile program delivery, and we're also featuring in the cloud, and a lot of people have said, well, you know, uh, we do a lot of audio processing to make our sound just the way it needs to sound, and today, uh, the Zeta Cloud offers some very, uh, very interesting audio processing capabilities from names that you would recognize. Sound for Omnia. Keep going. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Now there's a thing I like to call Zeta Cloud Central. And, and the concept behind this is that basically this becomes your central content and data repository. Um, this is site replication where we can send and receive, we can back up and restore. Uh, and this then becomes, instead of replicating between individual sites and clusters, we can actually replicate everything to the cloud and then replicate from the cloud to any of the physical facilities that we may have. Uh, we can also do cloud level voice tracking, which is something that we're working on right now, but that's also very compelling. Instead of actually logging into cluster one, cluster two, or cluster three, I can log into the Zeta Cloud and actually do the voice tracking for any one of the clusters which happen to be attached to the Zeta Cloud Central. And of course, with Selector Cloud, um, that puts a ribbon on all of this, is that basically we can then have all of our programming, uh, our enterprise programming, centrally stored in the cloud as well. And then that way we'd be able to share that in a very similar way that we'd be sharing our audio assets and other types of programming with Zeta Cloud. This gives us something really powerful in terms of agile programming for your broadcast. We can do on-demand de on format changes. We change our mind what we want to be doing for station ABC. Um, and then what we can do is to simply say, all right, great, we're going to change this whole thing where ABC is no longer going to be top 40, they're going to be adult contemporary. And how quickly can we make that change as quickly as you can bolt it together, which is if you've got all the assets, you've got the programming, great. Now station ABC becomes adult contemporary yeah. instead of top 40. And just because of for, for time purposes, because we're running out of time here, Scott. So of course, any of this structure can always be, as we said, very flexible. We can expand on this, you know, either add more elements or take some elements away. If you got questions, by the way, on how this works, of course, we'll be more than happy to help you uh, get to where you need to be in regards of structure, as Scott was saying, too. So if you do have questions on this, feel free to comment or direct message us. You can reach out to your local RCS sales rep. I can be more than happy to help kind of guide you to where you need to be um, in that kind of structure. Sorry, keep going. 
Right on. Um, I, I went through some of the, uh, the, the other pieces here very quickly, but I, I wanted to talk about the embedded device play out and how this would, um, would be able to allow you today to deliver uh, programming from the cloud. So basically what happens with the, with the embedded device play out, and we did this, I actually installed it on a sound for audio processor at NAB, what, 2018? Um, 2019, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So basically what we did is we controlled everything from the cloud. So basically Zeta Cloud was controlling the playout and the operations, but the physical playout and the audio assets were actually stored on the Sound4 device. So that meant that we didn't have to deal with the latencies that would, would potentially occur if we're actually encoding it in the cloud and delivering it to a, to a local receiver, if you will. But if everything is being played out local, that gives us the capability, although this is not gonna be frame accurate, but if we had voice coming in from you know, remote studios or remote devices uh, encoded and delivered to that same facility, with the program audio output, when I press the button when I, my, from my workstation, from my browser to say, play this, this device and said, play this song, and I talk on top of that song, the, although it's not gonna be frame perfect, it would actually be much closer than actually an encoded uh, stream that would be. So we actually would be able to see and play out in, in fairly close to real time. And there's some great devices out there already, you know, from a number of different manufacturers that make this delivery here to the, uh, to the, um, to the codec, uh, uh, to the uh, decoder uh, for voice information and have it come out, um, you know, as a single program feed. Yeah, and Scott, too, because we have these teasers on Facebook Live, I can tell you that we're working on some really interesting stuff with BritBoxes and Zeta Cloud as well. So expect some uh, Sound 4, some, some BritBoxes in there, too, coming down the pipeline. So I'm going to try and drive this home, Nate. Thank you for your patience right. and time. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we can bolt this together in, a co in many creative ways. I mean, sophisticated combination of physical and cloud services um, to meet individual market needs. And that's really what a Zeta Cloud hybrid network, network is all about. It's an architecture that highlights the extreme flexibility and possibilities for radio program delivery. And the architecture itself provides a flexible and scalable path to the future. So you don't have to marry the cloud right from the beginning. If you embrace embrace the cloud and the hybrid, it gives you the option of going uh, any way that you would choose to go into the future. And it gives you maybe a safety net um, towards, you know, what we believe is the future of broadcasting, which is the Zeta cloud. Thank you very much for your patience, everyone. And for me going overtime, Nate. <laughs> I really appreciate the questions that are blinking there. So of course, you know, if you do have any questions, um, you can reach out to Scott. You can see his email right there, sfartrcsworks.com. Your local RCS sales representative, they can help you as well. As always, you can direct message us. You can direct message me. You can comment. All of that good stuff. We'll be more than happy to help you answer your questions and get you where you need to be. As uh, Brian Willard always has said, we will make it work. We always make it work. So, um, Scott, thank you so much for the time. As always, these videos are archived for you. If you want to go back and watch them, do it on our Facebook page. Just go to Facebook slash RCS Sound Software, the video section, or you can go to rcsworks.com and then the blog section up on top. Scott, thank you so much. We will uh, be here again next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. If you have topics and questions, let us know. We have uh, some good stuff lined up for you. So we'll talk to you next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Scott, thank you again. Nice night. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.